the Skoda Enyaq IV, the electric SUV by Skoda, is today here on Autogefühl with Thomas. You wanted to see us driving the car, that's what we do today. But first, a look at the exterior. Velvet red is the color for today and a huge front grille, but closed off because the electric vehicles do not need so much cooling. Then the headlamps leap over right there. Seamless integration, LED is standard. Matrix LED is an option. And the turning indicators are also very interestingly integrated in a Czech glass craftsmanship style. So beautifully done. And optional, you can also get an illuminated front grille that is then combined with the normal main headlamp unit while driving. We also took a look at that at the world premiere. It will be later on available. Really interesting. Strong lower bumper here. So a quite prominent styling here in the front and the MEB building platform they use purposely built for the electric vehicles together with the VW ID4 and the Audi Q4 e-tron so they're all siblings let's see how much advantages this platform is giving this vehicle interesting side profile and the length is 4 meters 65 15 foot 3 or 183 inches and what is it in the styling? SUV? Crossover? Van? Hmm, maybe something in between. But for a family vehicle of that size, here when I approach the vehicle, opens itself and also the side mirrors fold out. Really elegant appearance here with the chrome frames around the windows and the dropping line is right here. Long wheelbase, a lot of space on the interior, short overhang and wheels come from 18 to 21 inch. Biggest wheels for a Skoda vehicle ever. These here are the 20 inch wheels, so I think a good compromise somewhat. Interesting technology wise is rear wheel drive here for this one today. That means a short turning circle because you can turn the front wheels way in both directions. But there are also all wheel drive models available with more power. Soon more to that. Three battery sizes available 52, 58 kilowatt hours. Yeah, that's a small step. Why? And then the biggest one, 77 kilowatt hours. That one makes most sense because it doesn't have a super high range. You will need the biggest battery. I can tell that right now already. These are the net figures for the kilowatt hours. And then charging is right here, passenger side. 11 kilowatt AC for the biggest battery and 125 kilowatt DC again for the biggest battery. Not too fast in a fast charging, of course. But still, I mean, that's a start. This is a new song, Q, by Enya. Yeah. <laughs> There's Skoda Enya here with a big Skoda lettering here at the rear. The hatch, hmm, I think it does resemble a little bit Kia design. Or does Kia design resemble Skoda design in the rear? What's your take on that? Really interesting again, the beautiful signature for the rear lights. And also when you put the turning indicators here, or the hazard lights, then you also have a cascading effect if you went for the matrix LED option. Crossover cladding here in the rear. And overall, it ranges from 150 to 300 horsepower. There will also be an RS version with all-wheel drive with around 300 horsepower then. So around six and a half seconds in the acceleration. Below that is another all-wheel drive model, the ATX. And this one here is the AT model without the all-wheel drive, so rear-wheel drive only. Then we have about 8.5 seconds in the acceleration figure. Our first range estimate, by the way, around 400 kilometers or 250 miles in summertime. Less than that definitely in winter times at the temperatures we have here at the moment. And in the front, do we have a frunk? No, we don't. So the only cool thing you can find here is this funnel. Fold it open, then you can easier fold, easier fill in the wiper fluid. Yeah, <laughs> like this. And if you wonder how I could hold open the hood with one hand and have the microphone in the other hand. Yeah, that's the way I did it. By the way, I'm using this microphone here because it's really loud in here and extremely windy. So best sound quality for you guys, even though I know it's old school, but it's also, you know, best quality for you. And I I still find it cool, right? Key fob, glossy black. This will collect some scratches, the same as the VWs are also using. Then door closing sound. Mmm, that's really nice. Speaks for a good build quality, as for that at least. Then here also an interesting structure and also soft touch. Then this brushed aluminum look here and a really nice soft fabric structure, like a living room atmosphere. I really like that. The only thing is here where you always grab the door by the inner handle to close it. That is just hard plastic and it doesn't feel that good. 
and I also show you something else of that very soon. Then a lot of space on the inside of the doors and the rest of the interior very interesting here. So a bright styling once again like a Scandinavian furniture design, really like that. These seats here are a mix then of microfiber fabric leatherette on the outside but also animal skin chair and the reason is why you know an electric vehicle supposed to be sustainable 2021 mm, i don't get it this here is called lounge there's also studio for the base model and loft these two studio and loft will feature fabric seats the only animal free seats then here lounge alcantara animal leatherette chair and lodge will feature one-third wool, two-third of recycled PET. That would be somewhat close also. And then is sweet and eco-sweet than with animal skin. So overall not that consistent by Skoda. VW does it a little bit better than with the ID4 where they do not offer any animal material on the seat. However, the seat form itself is pretty cool here. Very nice, comfortable and upright. So that's really nice to sit on and steering wheel, once again, good build quality up and down, in and out. So an easy process to do that. And you have a very nice roundabout visibility and a good feeling of space. It's not the longest vehicle. Yeah, you can say compact to midsize SUV, definitely depending on definition. But the space you have here on the interior, it's really impressive. And with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1, Still some headroom left. There's a panoramic roof built in here. That's an option. You have to turn on the ignition for that. And then there's, there's this slider here. Um, yeah, and that about the slider. There we goes. So that also shows again, sliders are not the solution, especially not while driving. So there's one slider here for the shade and then another slider to open the roof. But I failed three or four times now and when we didn't have a slider, I failed never in controlling that one. So thumbs down for sliders, thumbs up for real buttons. For example, here in the lower middle console, this is like a you know, piano or something and these buttons say, please press me and they also you know, resonate quite well with the rest of the build quality. At least we have these. Oh, ain't that cute. <laughs> this is the shifting lever here, reverse in the front, D or the B mode for more recuperation, so space saving. Then you have cup holders here in the front, but they're not adaptive. Inductive charging pad for your phone too, actually, but you can also connect via cable, whatever you prefer, USB-C connection and more space here and also underneath the armrest, very well attached, so a lot of space right there, split. That's very well used, the space they have here. Now the interior overview, and that is so nicely done. The soft fabric right here, and then the swinging lines has some kind of Mercedes atmosphere, actually. Base model will start with a 10-inch screen, but most NX out there will then get this 13-inch screen, also the biggest one ever available in the Škoda. This is the volume control in the lower area. Yeah, sliders, hmm, no. <laughs> I don't like them. Do you? Tell me in the comments. Left side is a tiny 5.3 inch digital instrument screen. Skoda claims, yeah, we have most of things in the head-up display, so we don't need so much space. I say they save money and then put the screen smaller. <laughs> but what's cool is when you hit the brakes, automatically the ignition goes on, so you don't have to use the start-stop button right here. That's a very handy feature. You cannot control so much in the instruments right there because, again, they are tiny. But the head-up display, the optional one, this is a very cool one. And we also show you some pictures while driving. It also has this augmented reality function where you see the arrows when turning, when you have a root set. That is very nicely done. On the steering wheel, heating is available. This is here the volume control. Always use this one instead of the slider right side then for the cruise control for example and then this huge screen interesting menu structure these are some of our consumption figures for today right here and then there's this home menu there's this home menu yeah and this is already a thing we know from bw skoda and seat 
This is the first time it happens today, though. Um, we didn't have it before, but these screen freezers, they do happen with the new vehicles. Yeah, and it's really weird. We even had it in the Porsche recently, so I'm not sure what the VW Corporation is doing there, but it's really not a single case. It happens all over the, and time again. At least I found a fast solution. So here there's the on and off or also mute button and I just press and hold it for like 15 seconds or something and then the system does a restart and now the touchscreen is working again. So if you are a customer of this vehicle then and watch this video, you also have a solution if you have a screen freeze at some point. It also counts for a lot of the other models right now. This is the GPS map then here. You see the loading times are also not that fast. Um, the map itself is actually quite good, but again, it is lacking CPU power. So once again, we see that these cars are so great to ride. They are so great in the hardware technology, but the software technology is still lacking behind majorly. And then the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration, that looks super fancy, definitely. And let's hear some music. Oh, why can't I control the music here at the steering wheel? It's not working. I'm telling you it. It is connected to the ignition. When I turn on the ignition, then the buttons at the steering wheel work. I mean, why is that? Why? Well, but the sound is actually quite nice. <laughs> yeah. But once again, um, a lot of electronic and software clues to be fixed right here. But the menu structure itself is actually quite easy and you can understand what you're doing. However, temperature control here mm, on the touchscreen, yeah, definitely missing the climate knobs. The only thing you could do is actually use the voice control. Set temperature to 23 degrees. Okay. Ah, there we go. That worked. Yeah, and there was one more thing here with the inside door handle. So when you close the door, sometimes, and you don't do it hard enough, then the door doesn't close properly because this angle here where you touch the inner inside handle is not ideal. So you, you don't apply too much force to the inside, but more like a lateral force. So um, yeah, not ideal solution for the inside of the doors. It's a tiny detail, but that's why we're here. If you switch from the front to the rear compartment, well, you might use the umbrella here hidden at the inside of the doors, a little bit of Rolls-Royce feeling. And you might ask yourself, why would I ever switch from the front then to the rear? Well, at fast charging stations I do that for example, and then I put the front seat all the way to the front and take a seat in the rear to have a different seating position while doing this brake inside the vehicle when it's cold outside or something. Here, fabric inside of the door, also in the rear, beautiful. This is more, more hard packed than here however but it has a nice structure still and manual shade for the kids. And the same styling then if you pick this styling line for the rear seats. And the question is this building platform, when I have the seat as I would be driving, what's the legroom left rear? So, let's see here. Easily space for four tall adults and you also have somewhat of an upright seating position here, but the only thing is you see that the rear bench is a little bit backwards, hmm, we know from a VW ID3 as well, for example, so that's not to my liking. I rather have it like in this upright seating position and in the middle part here, you can sit here. This is set to Jonas cameraman position here, always like this because, you know, he's like Thor, you know. So and then, yeah, you can sit here as well. That's possible. So it's good that we don't have this middle tunnel. That's the advantage. And you also have, next to USB-C charge, a real power socket right there. That's nicely done. And also a rear climate unit. Other than that, here in the middle part, you can fold down this to have cup holders. They're not adaptive though. And then there's also a ski hatch on the inside. You can fold the seats from here, but there's a more clever mechanism also from the trunk. And now to the trunk, which has some very cool solutions. Electric hatch, 585 up to 1,710 liters. And then this folding mechanism here, you can fold like this. Really clever and super clean. Also here with the rails and you press it. Wow, that's how it's supposed to be. Really nicely done. Width, a little bit less than 40 inches or one meter. 
and the length also the same a little bit less than 40 inches or one meter and the height to the cover here is about 20 inches or 50 centimeters and the total height here is a little bit less than 30 inches or a little bit less than 75 centimeters but overall very well usable also here with the folding mechanism like this also on the other side like this once again that's how it's supposed to be really nicely done underneath space for your charging cable also in the front yeah i mean the only thing is when you put things here then of course you have to you know push them further in first and then they're here some splitters hidden so that things don't fly all over the place you know you can put them like this and then put them back like here so very intelligent solutions and the total length here up to the seat as we would be driving jonas and me yes this is our old school folding ruler you combine new tech with old school stuff <laughs> so and here we go these are 70 inches or a little bit less than 180 centimeters one meters 80 so a very good result here and last but not least feature here you can fold out a towing hook right here and then underneath it appears like this and our last test for today with the interior is the famous auto crew child safety test for the electric hatches thomas proof Welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge, electrified today with the Škoda Enyaq, the Škoda EV SUV and we're starting here. Yes, of course, you know, the Germans, we have to go in the Autobahn, that's what we do. <laughs> so we're getting here in this corner and indeed low center of gravity as we know from all the electric vehicles, that's good because it is more like a bigger family SUV on the inside, but it feels agile and sporty due to this lower center of gravity battery all the way on the bottom of the vehicle that's of course pretty cool steering is nice precise and direct the suspension is not too stiff so i can shake up the car a little bit but i think it's a good decision for this vehicle not to make the suspension too stiff so that's totally fine and now we are on the motorway and we can accelerate it out let's see how much power this so called 80 version has rear wheel drive official figure is 8.5 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour and here we are already at speed let's see how much power this car still has we're starting at 75 kilometers an hour and let's go and that's 130 kilometers an hour so around 80 miles an hour I mean, it's not a super special acceleration. It's the rear wheel drive only model with the bigger battery, but you see there's still something happening. The good thing is that the electric motors have the instant torque as soon as you apply the throttle, but you can't expect too much if you don't have the all-wheel drive model or then later the all-wheel drive model with the RS patch, which will more land around like six and a half seconds, so two seconds faster in the acceleration. But the rear wheel drive model, is enough usually and the good thing is you have a smaller turning circle so you have a turning circle of a small car like a Škoda Fabia and here with this big Škoda Enyaq EV SUV because when you don't have front wheel drive anything or like the additional motor on the front the wheels can turn in a little bit steeper like this than here with the rear wheel drive model and indeed the cool thing about this vehicle is that it feels more agile than it actually looks like. That's to me one of the best things. We also have the modern assistance systems here in the vehicle. So the blind spot monitor, for example, when we're getting overtaken, I think we soon come to that. And then you have you know the light here in the side of the mirror. And you also have the what VW calls a travel assist, so the extended lane keeping assist with capacitive features so the car realizes you are holding onto it just by touching it and of course with the adaptive cruise control and we can set it here on the steering wheel and oh they also call it travel assist by the way now sometimes they also have other brand names for that this is a good test here now because we are in this construction lane and let's see if the car can actually keep it 
I was a little bit nervous from the steering wheel here, but so far I'm not steering myself. Now 100 kilometers now are detected. That's a great test. Uh, nah, now I want to override myself. So here in these tricky, narrow construction lane situations, that's always a fierce test for these assistance systems. So they work better or flawlessly when there's the normal lines. Construction lanes, only the best systems can do it. So once again here, really nice in and out of the corner. And I mean, we are on the motorway, yes, but you don't realize that there would be much wind noise. It is a high standing vehicle in general, but still, it's reasonably silent here, that's cool. Big difference to the VW ID4, I feel at least, they both share the same platform, but this one here on the one end feels more sophisticated from the interior build quality. We've seen that in the interior review as well, but you also feel it while driving, it's more sophisticated. And the ID4 is more like this, a little bit more like in the Tesla direction. Yeah, we're in this tech area, we want to save a little bit on the interior equipment, we want to make it a little bit easier. And here, let's say, ah, come on, we have some nice elements here and there. And I think, to me, that's cooler somehow more sophisticated but then again it feels also a little bit bulkier than the ID4 it again drives sporty for the size and for the interior space but the ID4 in comparison feels a little bit more agile in driving that's you know a very interesting comparison definitely but however here you see the lane change is a lot of fun and it's rarely the case that such a family SUV or family van style, a little bit also, something in between, is so much fun to drive, that's really cool. About recuperation, I'm usually using the B mode, so when I lift my foot off the throttle, we have recuperation going on, also quite substantial. The alternative would be in the D mode, then the car is just rolling. And then I can use the shifting pedals, here right or left side, left side recuperation level one, two, three, three then, Again, strong recuperation when I go off throttle. And here I decrease the acceleration, the, 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 um, the deceleration again with the right shifting pedal. Let's test here, level three in the D mode. Also see how much that is. And then in the B mode, which overrides everything. Yeah, it comes close. Very interesting, you see here, how much kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers we are recuperating then, or how much are we using? And that's a very interesting thing. So, for example, when I go off the throttle here, shows we are getting back some 50 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That's a quite good charging speed already. And of course, when I'm on the pedal, then more the consumption. So we had this one acceleration, but when we didn't have it before, we were landing up here about 22 kilowatt hours or more kilometers. That would mean around 350 kilometers or 220 miles of range at a temperature of six degrees on the outside, Celsius. So it's closer to a freezing temperature. Um, yeah, I mean, range should be higher, definitely. It's the big battery here. So when there's normal summertime, I rather expect than something 400 kilometers plus, 250 miles plus, but it's of course still far away from the promised figures. The heat pump is an option for all the batteries. Definitely, if you take this vehicle, you have to pick the biggest battery, no matter for which use case, because you will need the range at some point you will be annoyed at some point when you pick the small battery version and that's also the reason why so far orders 80 percent of all all the orders at least and the ones in germany i have this figure went for the biggest battery there's a reason for that and i also advise you to follow that one now we're getting more in the countryside once again also good upright seating position i have a great roundabout visibility this vehicle has a very nice traveling feeling so I could very well imagine going on a longer road trip with that one. Oh wait a minute there's the charging <laughs> yeah okay you need some good fast chargers then but then again fast charging is here is limited to 125 kilowatt that's of course not too fast hmm yeah and that rules it out for the you know regularly long journey things not the primary use case then of this vehicle but overall also very comfortable from the seat form. 
told you earlier, it would be even better if they didn't use any animal share at all. It's 2021 when we recorded this video and using animal materials in, in cars is just not up to date anymore. But the seat form itself, really super comfortable. And to me, the best thing is comfort at the same time, a sporty experience, very sophisticated interior from the materials and from the forms and design we see. So this feels and drives super premium. Range should be higher, that's the thing. And of course, not too fast here in the rear wheel drive only model. So if you want a little bit more spice and acceleration, then the all-wheel drive model it is for you. Other than that, a very, very nice and interesting driving experience here with the Enyaq. And now the conclusion for the day, Škoda Enyaq, the electric SUV by Škoda. Very interesting vehicle, definitely. Exterior styling, I think they really nailed it to give a family SUV with a lot of space on the interior, but still an elegant styling on the exterior. Interior also, as for the styling, superb. More like, a, you know, like these fluent lines used by Mercedes and so on. High build quality really very good and also a good offering of space. Software-wise on the interior, however, mm, yeah, once again, recent problem, VW, Seat, Skoda, sometimes even also Porsche and Audi, the new systems there are really not that good. We also had a screen freeze today. We could fix it quite quickly, but still it was there. Hmm, yeah, that's the main catch of this vehicle. Driving-wise, great hardware, so great in the agile driving feeling, especially and also with the rear drive model here today, narrow turning circle and so on. It really feels really nicely while driving. So you have a lot of space on the interior, but already a lot of driving fun and that's rather rare to find. So I was really convinced when driving it. Range wise, I mean, somewhat okay and not exceptionally bad if you compare other electric vehicles but still with some 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range this should be more with the bigger battery but also the competitors are most of times not better other new competitors are to come there for sure if you compare it to the vw id4 the id4 feels a little bit more agile and driving this one here offers more clever solutions on the interior and a little bit more loading volume on the interior that's a good thing and the Audi Q4 e-tron you can also soon see here on Autogefühl in the final version. If you late, later watch this video here, it will also be linked in the video description. Prices, the entry model at 34,000 euros in Germany, that's really a very attractive offer considering the size of the vehicle. But then of course also base equipment and also just a small battery. This one here, rear wheel drive but bigger battery starting 44,000 euros, so still a quite attractive deal. If you then add some extra equipment or maybe go for an orbit drive model, then of course you get rather right towards 50 and 60,000 euros. But still, considering also the competition, very attractive prices here. And this could also be one of the key factors in the sales figures of this vehicle. What do you think? You think it's an attractive deal? Tell me in the comments. See you there and also at our very next review.